A Northern California mom is grieving today as she does most days after her son was killed while serving in the Marines. I had the opportunity to sit down with Diane Layfield and hear the story of her son Travis's life. She tells me all about the ways he still sends his love two decades after his passing. And he'd give you the shirt off his back if he could. He just was a really caring young man and I think that's what drove him to go into the military. Travis Layfield knew since he was little he wanted to serve in the military. After high school he joined the Marines and soon after deployed to Iraq. You know he knew already that there was a conflict kind of starting over in the Middle East and um, didn't scare him. You know he said mom this is what I want to do. Diane was able to see her son before he deployed and talked with him on the phone when he arrived in Iraq. And he said mom I waited in lines for hours just to talk to you. And he said, Mom, just keep talking to me. I'm staying right on the phone. So we did, not knowing it was going to be our last conversation. Three weeks after arriving, Travis Layfield was killed in Iraq at just 19 years old. Travis was one of 11 Marines killed in that attack. They found him at the end of town in a pile of rubbish where the insurgents had drug him and stripped him of his gun, his clothes, everything. And thank God small blessings, but they left his antenna headset on and that's how his buddies found him was all they saw was his antenna sticking up out of the out of the rubble. Otherwise he'd be MIA and I'm not sure I could ever live with that. And this Memorial Day marks Diane's 20th without her son. I honor him as much as I can till my last breath. I will honor my son. It takes quite a person to stand up and sign on that dotted line to give their lives possibly. Despite the unimaginable pain of your child leaving this earth before you, Diane says she tries living her life to the fullest. He knows I love to dance and he'd say, he wrote that in one of his last letters, part of it, he said, mom, just keep on dancing. Don't go in a corner and cry for me. He said, just keep on dancing. She says she's comforted by knowing she'll see Travis again. And someday we'll see them again. I believe that wholeheartedly. And by the little signs he sends. Travis has Lakota Sioux Indian on his father's side. Travis had a tattoo of a feather to honor his Native American heritage. He got it to symbolize being the firstborn son. After Travis's memorial service, Diane got a matching tattoo. There was a Lakota Sioux medicine man that came and did a drumming for us for his memorial service. And he said, do you know what Travis's feather means? And we said, yes, Grandma said firstborn son. He said, no, it means fallen warrior. But that surprise was just the beginning of what Diane describes as her fallen warrior, showing her he's still with her. Two and a half years after Travis was killed, um, we found out that he had a son. And we didn't know, Travis never knew he had a son. A literal piece of Travis still here with Diane. Looks like him, does so many gestures and so many little things in his laugh and it's like, oh my God, that's just like Travis, you know? It's just amazing for never knowing his dad. She calls Dylan a blessing. So many would say at the Gold Star families, oh my God, I just wish he would have had a son or a daughter. So then I kind of felt guilty, you know, having one, but it's like, this was God's gift to us. And now, Dylan is leaving his own legacy. So this is Dylan, my grandson, and with my great-grandson, Kaylin. A week before what would have been Travis's 40th birthday, his son Dylan welcomed a new member of the Layfield legacy. So incredible. yesterday, yeah, really incredible story. And, and just yesterday was Travis's, what would have been his 40th birthday. Yeah. And his new grandson there, Kaylin, is now 10 days old. That was the part of the story that I wanted to talk to you about, yeah. because that two and a half year old, because when something like this happens, whether it be uh, war related or a anything else, a tragic loss like that, you, you just search for those little pieces of that person that is left behind. And usually it's just their clothes or their belongings or just things that belong yeah. to them. Right. So I can't imagine in that mom's eyes and you have this little boy two and a half years later that is like looking in the mirror at your boy, at your son, and it's your grandson, and you didn't know that this piece existed. Yes. And so while you're desperately searching for that piece of your loved one, you get perhaps the greatest piece of that loved one that they could have ever left behind, like a little piece of who that human being is. Yeah, How quite, great is that? quite literally. And you know, we, we talked about it. We know that, you know, she, Diane tells me that Travis is so happy because he knows that his son that he didn't know about uh, when he was here on earth yeah. is so loved and well taken care of by his family and his siblings and his mom and um, you know he's having a great life here now well, as his own kid. And obviously you made mom feel comfortable enough to open up. Oh, well she was so sweet, That's generous to share this story. Wonderful, I loved it.